184 of you voted for the most important Bengals for the future. Let's break down the consensus results. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm Jake Lisko. He's James Rapine. We're continuing our top 15 or so most, most important Bengals for the future series with the consensus top 15 or so and the public voting results. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network here on Locked On Bengals, available on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. If you're new to the show, you can subscribe, and that'll make it really easy to join the Everydayer Club. And shout out to all of you who make us a part of your everyday routine and all the people out there who make us their first listen of the day. Appreciate all the regulars so very much. And James, 184 votes, 184 lists, and shout out to Neil Engelberger for helping us to compile this data as he does in draft season as well. The guy is a a spreadsheet elite. He's really, really good at helping us get this data in. And 184 of you, like I said, voted on the most important Bengals for the future. And there are some surprises here, James. There are. There's some su- Consider what the public thinks here. For sure. There are some surprises. And the first thing that stands out, just looking at at some of the percentages, how is Jamar Chase not in the top five always? And yet there are some that didn't have Jamar Chase in the top five. Uh, what we can agree on, and I thought it would be that for sure, top five for sure, right? Even I would certainly have him too. Joe Burrow is number one. So the consensus ranking there, Everyone got that one right. No one tried to be edgy. No one put Jake Browning. We didn't see any weird. So so I guess that's the one thing. But outside of that, you're right. 184 plus our panel of five. So 189 total votes. And you look at them and everyone has a disagreement here or there. And that's what's fun about this is there's no perfect formula. There's no perfect answer. And it's going to be fun to break down uh, the top 15-ish today and, and, and show our listeners exactly where they're at, where the, they're 15 ranked uh, compared to the consensus rankings. Yeah, and it's interesting because everyone interpreted the prompt a little bit differently. And we'll talk about some of those takeaways later. But let's run through the, the top 15 to start. The, the public top 15 or so we'll we'll mention perhaps some notables outside of the top 15 but public agrees joe burrow jamar chase one and two marius mims number three cam taylor Britt number four miles murphy coming in for the public at five orlando brown at six trey hendrickson at seven and and for me the first couple of surprises right after that chris jenkins and jermaine burton rookies this year at eight and nine in the top 10, Logan Wilson at 10, Jordan Battle and Dax Hill tied for 12th, apparently. And, or or maybe Jordan Battle is 11, Dax Hill is 12. Maybe you have a data entry error there. uh, DJ Turner, 13, T Higgins, 14, Chase Brown, 15. Rounding out the top 15 from the public. Some guys that, that you liked, James, a little bit more than the public, notably, like Geno Stone, all the way down at 17 in the public rankings. You had him at 11. Sheldon Rankins, all the way down at 21 in the public mm-hmm. rankings. You had him at 9. I had him at 14. And, and some other notable ones, Sam Hubbard, who you had in your top 10, 27th for the public. And so some, some interesting results there. What stands out to you the most? Well, let's talk about Jordan Battle because he's 12th, 12th, right? Uh, am I looking at this right? Yeah, he's 12th. What planet is he more important to the Bengals' future than Geno Stone? There isn't one. The, the, the Bengals told you. Like, I, I, I don't know what, where we're at and what scenario where you would view it that way. Now, do you like Jordan Battle? Do you think he's promising? Do you think he could start? That, that's fine. All of those things are great. Geno is starting. 
Gino is the guy that's going to play the majority of the snaps this year. And spoiler, next year. And so Jordan Battle's only under contract one more year. I, I don't I don't get that one. I think that one stands out right away as as to one you've seen Jordan play for your team. And so that's that's why you view it that way to a degree. Like Geno Stone is by far more important. And I, I don't understand why outside of knowing Jordan, seeing him drafted, all of those things, Geno's young. It's not like he's 30. He's under contract for two years. So that, that one stands out right away as one where it's like, oh, well, well obviously. Like if, if you gave Duke Tobin truth serum or, or Lou Anarumo or any of those guys, and not just for this year, if they were doing this exercise, Gino would be ahead of Jordan. I have no doubt. I think this is where the word future comes into play to a significant, significant degree for the public. And when I compare it to our panel votes, we had five of us, myself, you, we, we went over our respective lists in our last couple of episodes. We have Joe Goodberry, who's going to be our next episode next week. We've got John Sheeran and Mike Santagata's votes as well. Out of all of those people, the only ones that had Geno Stone ahead of Jordan Battle were you, James, and Mike Santagata, who had him at 11, and Jordan Battle at 12. I had it pretty close as well. Geno Stone, 14, Jordan Battle, 12. And I think a big focus in our show with Joe is going to be, uh, not to spoil things too much, on Jordan Battle. And, and where that discrepancy comes from. So I don't want to give away too much of what our panel had to say because we're going to talk to them individually. But in addition to the public being higher on Jordan Battle than Geno Stone, so were, so were most of our voters. Uh, you were obviously the, the biggest exception here. You have Geno Stone the lowest out of any voter by, by a significant margin. Or sorry, no, no, no. Jordan Battle yeah. the lowest out of sure. all of these uh out of out of these players by by a significant margin to any of our other voters and i i imagine the reasoning there is what you just talked about is your perspective on jordan battle versus everyone else seeing it as anticipating that he will be a future starter for some amount of time and really focusing on the word future to a large degree there yeah i that's so if he starts for two years he's not starting this year so if he starts for two years then that matches Geno Stone. Like, I just, I don't see the formula there. And the other part is it's a safety. The Bengals had arguably the best safety in the game when they had Jesse Bates. And he's probably not the best, but one of the best. And so you just rank them that way. Like, I just think position value comes into play at some point too. And there's unknown and position value and all of those things go into it. And so it's nothing against Jordan. I think he can be a starter, be a really good player. I don't want people to think that, that that's what I'm thinking. I just, there's, there's only so many safeties I'm going to list uh, in the top there. And, and Gino, to me, uh, far and away, would be the one that would be higher on the list. I, I'm, so that one's surprising to me. Um, and I, I think looking, for me, the bigger surprise I, by the way, is I, that. I have Jordan Battle 26th. I only rank 26 people. You, that's a data entry error, 26. I think that the, the interesting thing about Gino Stone's placement is, is not necessarily where he is relative to Jordan Battle, although that's something that you know you find shocking and, and want to focus on. That didn't surprise me as much. It was in line with the way that I ended up scoring things to a large degree. But I think the, the bigger surprise to me is just how low Geno Stone is, period. And I know it's only a two-year deal, and this is also true for Sheldon Rankins, but those two guys are going to be asked to play really big roles on this defense in the next two years. Unless something goes really wrong this year and they're pivoting after one year, like those two guys are playing really big roles for this team in the next few years, and and the public ends up at 17 on Geno Stone and 21 on Sheldon Rankins. And is anyone going to play more pieces. snaps than Geno Stone this year on defense? Maybe yeah, Cam maybe, Taylor Britt. Yeah, maybe Cam Taylor Britt. Logan Wilson. Like maybe those couple. You know, I maybe maybe Logan. I don't even think Logan though. Just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. Like, he's pretty important. That's all. And, and again, here is where there's, I think, a methodology difference of future versus present, where we go back to your episode where we talked about your, your methodology. It was very much focused on the things that we can anticipate realistically versus trying to project things into the future where a lot Is there a future where Jordan that. Battle plays 95% of the defensive snaps for a year? Clearly, I think a lot of people think there is. Okay. And that's interesting. I, what, what I think 
anyways, it's we, we could go in circles. I would be shocked if Geno Stone has a, a worse impact over the next two years than Jordan Battle has over the next three years. That's all. A lower impact. Uh, whatever you want to say, whatever adjective you want to use. And and for some people, the time horizon may be bigger and smaller, and that's why we have the the rankings that we do. We'll continue with some of the other takeaways and interesting noteworthy bits of ranking data here coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app you need to get to right now. So you can go to Great American Ballpark whenever you want to. Maybe you're hanging out at the banks and you decide you want to mosey on over to GABP. Maybe you're planning to go to Great American Ballpark to watch the Reds this summer. Well, whether you're planning in advance, whether you're going to go spur of the moment, Game Time is the app you need to find last minute deals, plan in advance. You get views from your seat. They have a lowest ticket price guarantee. They take the guesswork out of buying tickets to all of your favorite live events. Maybe you want to get ahead of it with the, the Bengals schedule and get some tickets to a road game or maybe the season opener against the New England Patriots. You can do all of those things with game time. Game time. So take the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets and all tickets with a game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. James, one of the interesting data points that we gathered because we put all of this into a spreadsheet is the percentage of people that ranked certain players in the top five and the top 10. I found it really interesting how little consensus there was here. There are only two players in essentially everyone, except for literally one person who I think forgot about Jamar Chase or, or just doesn't think the Bengals are going to be able to keep Jamar Chase or something who didn't vote for Jamar Chase on their list at all. Joe Burrow consensus, number one, everyone did it. Jamar Chase, essentially everyone's number two. Those two guys are in everyone's top five. After that, there's not a whole lot of agreement. There's agreement in the top 10. There's two other players that are in 94% or higher of respondents' top 10s in Amari Swims and Cam Taylor Britt. But even after that, the next most consensus top 10 player is Miles Murphy getting 75% of top 10 votes. When you look at top fives, it's still Amari Swims and Cam Taylor Britt for the next two at 78% and 62%. But not a whole lot of consensus on the top five guys because after Cam Taylor Britt, you go down to 38% for, mm -hmm. for number five. So when considering number five, number six, for a lot of people are number four, number five, not a whole lot of agreement there, which I found to be very interesting that, you know, fans had a pretty easy time agreeing on the top four, three or four guys. But after that, a lot of divergence of opinion, even at the top. Sure. There, there is. And really, I think you could go a bunch of different ways at three on. I think the top is very clear. It's one, two. And then after that, you you could really, like, you could make the argument for Cam Taylor Britt, Amarius Mims, Miles Murphy, Orlando Brown Jr., Trey Hendrickson. Uh, you could make the argument for T. Higgins. You could, like, there's like eight guys there. And I, I think that there's certainly tiers. You, heck, you could go with Logan Wilson if you want with his contract and how long he's under contract for. A bunch of guys that you could make the argument for. I... I was a bit surprised at because Orlando Brown Jr. is under contract for three years mm -hmm. and 68% in the top 10. I really don't know of a scenario where you wouldn't have him in the top 10. And yet, what? How many people had him? Well, I guess what? Top five and top 10 was, was not. Am I reading this wrong? I'm reading it wrong. Never mind. So most people had him in their top 10. It's it's something where like clearly I would have him ahead of Miles Murphy right now. Uh, I would have I would have Orlando Brown Jr. neck and neck with Amarius Mims, and we discussed mine. But that, I, I was surprised by that a little bit. I, I think that it must be uh, some people don't think Orlando Brown's very good. Judging from one YouTube commenter and, and just looking at some of the individual lists that didn't rank him at all. It is about 40 entries that did not put him in their list at all, where perhaps in their list at all. Yeah. So yeah. I am reading this right. Okay. You're, so you're I did read it right. right. Yep. Okay. 
the, the, there, there must be people who just don't think he's very good that think that was a mistake of a contract. And actually go to our YouTube comments uh, from our first episode on this. And, and one of the comments was like, I don't understand how Orlando Brown's in anybody's top 10. He might be in the top 10 most overrated. So, so that sentiment oh. does exist. So he's the Bengals. new Jonah. Like he's going to be the new Jonah that gets. Yeah, but, okay. but here's the thing, like whether or not he's good, this goes back to my rationale from the first episode, the Bengals are paying him a lot of money and he's going to see most likely all of that contract. And he's going to start at left tackle for the entire time. Is your starting left tackle? Not one of the most important players on the team for a team that wants to drop back pass as much as the Bengals do. That would be my rationale for seeing him as a unanimous top 10 guy. Is he just, a, did he make it to a bunch of fake pro bowls? I mean, I, you know, I, that's what I would say. Like, clearly he's good. I mean, that's pretty factual. I don't now. Did he have his best year last year? No. Was he playing with the groin issue? Yes. Should he be better this year? You certainly hope so. And I would expect him to be, and I'm sure he expects to be. So that that's where, where it's tough, like just going back to battle. It's real easy to be like, oh, yeah, Orlando Brown Jr., clearly overrated. Jordan Battle, young, up-and-comer, going to be a star. Like it's Because the sample sizes are small from what a lot of people have seen. And so that's, that's what we remember. Like everyone thinks Dax Hill's bad right now, right? Because the last thing they saw was him struggling at the end of last year. They don't remember the, the beginning of the year. And so that that is that is is shining through a little bit here, at least with the Orlando Brown Jr. thing. Because yeah. him not being in the top 10, he is much like Jamar should be two and Joe should be one on every list. Orlando should be on every top 10 list, period. I, I don't really know how he wouldn't be. And and you know, Chris Jenkins not on a very different number of top 10 lists than Orlando Brown. And that's, <laughs> that's a rookie. Wild. Which yeah. Like, I, I get the projection there. Like, you're expecting Chris Jenkins to be, you know, maybe DT1 relatively soon and, and, and to be that guy if you're ranking them that way. But there's a lot of ifs there and, and a lot more known with Orlando Brown. You know, barring something crazy, he's going to be the starting left tackle for the next three years. Uh, another thing that I thought was interesting here that I, I wanted to cover in the public voting before we get to our uh, our panel's consensus and, and some takeaways to finish up the show is T. Higgins and Trey Hendrickson, a couple of guys that did not appear in a lot of lists because there's not much belief that they'll be part of the team for, for the distant future, although Trey does still have two years left. Uh, Trey Hendrickson in 46.7% of top 10s. But for people who did rank him, Interestingly, and, and I think there's some weighing happening here. He ends up sixth. T. Higgins ends up with like an average of a seven or so ranking for people that did put him in their top 10, but only 15% or so of people put him in the top 10. So for the people who believe or, or, or want to think that T is part of the future for the team, you know, there's consideration there that's elevating him, but not many people voted for him in the first place, which is in line with, uh, I think, you know, what our panel did for the most part there too, just not buying that he's going to be part of the team in the future. Yeah, I just, let's use Trey. Trey's easier because he's under contract for two years. Mm -hmm. How many guys, and I think Chris Jenkins is going to be really good. This goes back to my Jordan battle. Thing. It's, it's like the same mindset, same concept. But with Trey, no one debates how great he is. How many guys on this roster are going to make the impact that Trey makes over the next two years or that we expect him to make? In their career, let's not even do this window or rookie contracts or in their career, because if he gets 30 sacks over the next two years and is the, the Bengals number one pass rusher, which we expect him to be or 32 sacks or whatever you want, he's had 40 over the past three years. Like there aren't going to be many guys that have that kind of impact over eight years that he does in two years. And I think that's, that's just, again, a viewpoint, but why I, I was so high on Trey when I gave my list. When you have like a high end pro bowler at a position for two years, it's hard to imagine guys coming because because that's rare. It's hard to find players like Trey Hendrickson. Teams in the NFL have generally what two to seven players at that level. The ones that have seven players playing at that level are the teams that are really going hard in the playoffs and going deep in the playoffs. Generally, probably have a QB on a rookie contract and have been able to add uh, that caliber of player in free agency or have been very lucky 
in accumulating draft talent. But uh, it's rare to find players at that level, at Jamar Chase's level, at Joe Burrow's level, which is why from like a quality in one year, those guys were, you know, my clear top three, for example, in a one year importance sample. But I, I do think that's interesting how much focus there was on the future in this list. We'll wrap up with our consensus, our, our panel's consensus, and some takeaways here to finish up this show coming up next. One more thing, Jake, just looking at these percentages, Andre Yosevash was in the top 10, 12% of the time for, for people. T. Higgins at that, that 16% of the time, Mark. It's wild it's that close. And I get the future element. But it, it, that is, because if you tell, and Andre could be better. You know, he may end up being a starter for a long time. And I get why that's people are voting that way. But if I told you, Andre becomes Trent Irwin, and he's a serviceable fourth receiver, plays outside, gives you a little flex. Is Trent Irwin for the next three years, or you have one year of T, where do you go with that? By the way, I'm not being mean to Trent Irwin. Trent Irwin's a valuable piece. He's made big catches and big moments. That's, I don't think that's an insult for a former sixth-round pick in Andre Yosevich. But if I told you that, which, how would you rank that? I think you always take a – Pro Bowl-ish receiver, you know, Pro Bowl when he's healthy, Pro Bowl when he's on the field for a year over unknown for three years. But that's just not how people are thinking about this. And I think that's yeah. one of my big takeaways when I when I look at how the people voted by and large, like they really focus on the word future. They're really trying to project who they think is going to be part of this team, who's going to have big roles. And, and maybe the, the word future for some people made them think, okay, this is actually after 2024. So I'm going to ignore 2024 altogether. And, and that could be part of what's happened here as well is when they see the word future, they're thinking, okay, let's think about players that are going to be on the team from 2025 to 2027 or something like that. You know what I mean? Like everyone's going to have a different definition. I didn't define this very clearly intentionally because I wanted to see how people would run with it. I wanted to see what kind of approach people would have. And we'll talk about methodologies you and i had a big difference in methodology right we'll talk about the difference in methodologies with joe and with john and with mike as well over the next week and and i think that that's part of what makes it interesting and and leads to some of these conversations but by and large the biggest differences between the public rankings and our panel consensus rankings are chris jenkins where the public was much higher six six spots higher consensus had him at uh 14 for our panel and eight for the public and and then in in the other direction, I think was was Geno Stone, where our panel had him, and we just talked a lot about this. Our panel had him at eleven, and the mm -hmm. public had him at seventeen. Sleeping. So th those are some of the bigger differences. But we're Hubbard was a big one. Yeah, but you're the only person I think that ranked Hubbard in our. Consensus. Do people realize two years is a long, like two years? Like, yeah. yeah. It's, anyways, okay. Uh, another relatively big difference is Sheldon Rankins at 15 versus 21. Our, our panel had him at 15. The public had him at 21. But uh, since we're starting to talk about our panel's rankings here, James, we're actually pretty in line with the top six. There's a lot of agreement there. Burrow, Chase, obviously, but Mims, our panel, had at three. Public had at three. Consensus for number four in our panel was Cam Taylor Britt, which agrees with the public. And then we flipped Orlando Brown and Miles Murphy. Our panel had him at six and the public had him at five. Orlando Brown was at five for us. The public had him at six. And then things get a little bit divergent. Logan Wilson for our panel was seven for the public was 10. Trey Hendrickson for our panel was eight. Very similar to the public's seven. DJ Turner for our panel was nine, was 13 for the public. T Higgins was 10, 14 for the public. Jermaine Burton, 11, nine for the public. Geno Stone, 11, 17 for the public, mentioned that one already. Jordan Battle at 13 for our panel. You were way lower on him than anyone else. Like we said, we're going to talk about that a lot. Probably with uh, Joe coming up in our next episode was uh, 12 for the public. Chris Jenkins, 14 for us, 8 for the public. And Sheldon Rankins rounds out our consensus panel top 15 at 15 versus 21 for the public. Dax Hill, right outside of our top 15. I was the highest on him out of anyone by a lot. I had him 10th. Our panel consensus has him at 16. 
Yeah, I had him at 18. I had Rankins. I was the highest on Rankins. I had him at nine. Highest on Kappa as well for our panel. Had him at, at 12. The public had him at 23. Mm -hmm. Bold prediction. That one will change for the public. You, you think he's, he's going to extend it? He's going to, he's, well, he's just going to have a big year. He's going to be good this year. And he has two I, I just, years left, right? Yep. Yeah, and that, that's also a unique thing with that I didn't do that I think people did. Is they're like, oh, he's a rookie. Give him a bump up. He's going to be here longer. And, and that's fine. I get it. The Bengals don't have a ton of guys under contract for the next four years, just period. That doesn't mean that the guys that are under contract for two years aren't valuable, that aren't important, that aren't going to be uh, uh, make a huge impact. And I, I think that's, again, all about approaches, but that's one that stood out. Uh, another one that panel-wise, Evan McPherson, what he's 17th and in the public was 16th. So we saw eye to eye with him there. Uh, Chase Brown, the public had him 15th. We had him 18th. And, and so there were a couple there that, that were in lockstep that were farther down the list. So th that part is good to see. How about BJ Hill, by the way, 41st for public. Yeah. I think he got a handful of votes. That's all that means is that there's not very many people thought about him. He's got one year left on his deal, right? So, like, this is where no, I, the, the I didn't have him thing. on my. I I had him twenty. Twenty first, sixth, twenty first, yeah, twenty first. But but it, it he was grouped with all these guys that, that yeah. are kind of unknowns or or uh, veterans. So. How about Matt Lee? People really getting into Matt Lee twenty fifth. I mean, come on, come on, future starting center for the Cincinnati Bengals, maybe. But come on, <laughs> yeah, like, a lot of a lot of maybes there. Like, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's my big takeaway from this, which is really interesting. And and I think it would be cool to to repeat this with you know we're not going to because it's, it's a lot of work, but it'd be cool to repeat this with more uh, spelled out criteria, and and see how the results change. Because well, I, we can I really do this do think, annually, annually yeah, now, and then you, it'll be fun can. to look back on. When Geno Stone's a Pro Bowler in fifth next year, and I'm but, but I do think it's well, but he'll have one year left on his deal, so he's going to get the you know, and he'll get extended. Geno Stone was genius. Yeah. If he balls out this year, he's getting a new deal. If he gets or, extended, then obviously it'll change. You, you know, or he's going to be, you know, he's in position to get paid again quick. I'm sure they would have signed him to a three year deal if if he was down. I think the other one that's like the most volatile is Dax Hill and DJ Turner. A lot of people in the public voting in particular just said DJ Turner slash Dax Hill. And they just kind of put them in the same rank. And it's like, whichever one of these guys is the starting corner, that's the mm -hmm. one I'm picking. And same thing for Jermaine Burton and Andre Yosevash. A lot of people rank yeah. those two guys together and said pretty much whichever, out, whichever out of these yeah. guys emerges is the one that I want to put on my list. And I actually respect that approach where it's like one of these guys is going to have a bigger role than the other, we think. And whichever it is, they they don't know, but whichever it is is the one that's going to be more important than the team's future. Yeah, that's why I have battle where I do like I, I said battle twenty six, but he's right there in in the same bucket as uh, Jermaine Burton, as Chase Brown, as Andre Yosevash, as Charlie Jones, because they're all could be huge parts of things, but we don't know yet. Um, I I had uh, DJ Turner and Daxell right next to each other, seventeen, eighteen, same reason. Mm -hmm. I think both are going to play a lot. I don't know which one's going to start, and I don't know which one's going to be a long-term solution. Hopefully one, hopefully both, but we just don't know. The last thing that I want to mention here is, I, since we all have rankings in, uh, we can do a standard deviation to find the where there's the most consensus, where there's the least consensus. The most consensus is in some obvious places. It's at the top. Logan Wilson, a ton of consensus around where he would be, not a whole lot of, of variance in where he was ranked. Charlie Jones, not a whole lot of variance in where he was ranked, uh, for example. But there's a lot of divergence on Jordan Battle, who's going to be a guy we're talking about on this series. A lot of divergence on Trey Hendrickson, where, based on whether or not you think he's going to be part of the team in the future. A lot of divergence on Chris Jenkins, on Sheldon Rankins, on T. Higgins, on Jermaine Burton, on uh, Sam Hubbard, and Andre Yosevash. So those were some interesting ones that that I thought I'd point out as well. Where the least consensus was, and, and that's maybe a preview of where we're going to be talking with our panel, find out where they think we've gone wrong and justifying some of the outlier rankings 
that our panel has. We'll get into that next week where we will have episodes with Joe, with John, and with Mike to talk about their rankings and their methodologies and what their thoughts are compared to consensus. So that's coming up next week on Locked On Bengals. Until then, thanks for listening to this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. Hootay, and have a good one.